Today we're going to look at something a little different. We have my Criterion Core Series barrel that I've had since September of 2021 and I put about 15,000 rounds through it. It has a mid-length gas system and a tapered profile that goes to a 0.625 gas block. It's made from 4150 chromoly vanadium. It has a chrome line chamber and bore and a phosphate coating on the exterior. It has six groove rifling with a 1 to 8 twist and a 223 wild chamber. Criterion also advertises that they honed and hand lapped the rifling to create a more uniform internal finish. And from what I can see poking around the internet, Criterion basically has a reputation for having the least expensive premium grade barrel that is also very durable. Criterion has posted that their barrels can have an expected service life of around 10 to 20,000 rounds, depending on the firing schedule and maintenance. And overall, I've been very happy with the barrel. I use it mainly for competition shooting and training or practice. So the firing schedule isn't super aggressive, like doing full auto mag dumps, but I still get it pretty warm. So during this video, I'm going to inspect the barrel a little bit and see how well it's holding it up. And then I'll take it to the range and see how well I'm able to shoot it. And after that, I'll have some closing thoughts. Here we go. First up, I have a throat erosion gauge. The throat is usually the part of the barrel that gets the most amount of wear. I believe this barrel started out as a 0 or 1 on this gauge, and now it's looking like a 6 or a 7. And here's a look inside. As you can see, there's a lot to look at here. There's a lot of fire cracking, fissures, and just chunks of barrel material missing. And if you actually just look down the bore with your naked eye without a bore scope, you can see the cracks and crevices in the, uh, in the rifling. Looking back through the bore scope, you can see the copper that's been packed into some of the cracks. I did clean the barrel before getting this bore scope footage, which removed some of the copper. And here's a gas board, which is looking a little bit worse for wear. And here's a look at the crown, and also some of the rifling around near the, uh, the muzzle end. Anyway, uh, next we'll go over the rifle and range setup, and then get to shooting. The barrel was fit into an inspected upper receiver. The barrel nut was torqued to 40 foot-pounds after greasing the threads with Aero Shell 64. The handguard is free-floated. No muzzle device is used to prevent possible interference. A 3-inch bag rider was attached to the front of the handguard to fit the front rest. Short screws were used with the bag rider to avoid contacting the barrel. An A5 receiver extension is installed, and due to gas port erosion, an A5-4 buffer is used with a Sprinco green spring. The trigger is a Geisley two-stage super dynamic three-gun trigger. Ten rounds were fired prior to shooting the first group to foul the bore and to zero the scope. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch-pounds. Magnification is set at 20 and parallax is set at 100 yards. And the barrel will be cooled with a chamber chiller between each group. A chronograph will record the velocity of each shot. The chronograph is placed 8 yards from the rifle to avoid muzzle blast triggering the sensors. A shade is used to block direct sunlight and prevent errors caused by reflections. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was at the moment of firing. And the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. I'll be shooting in 30 shot groups to get a decent sample size and a realistic expectation of what this barrel can do. All groups will be fired at 100 yards, which is verified with a laser range finder. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target. The rifle is zeroed, so the point of impact is higher than the point of aim. I do this because it's harder to have a precise aiming point if I keep shooting holes in it. To keep the rifle as steady as possible, the rifle will be shot off a bench with a front rest and a rear bag. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon. Each group will take about four minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 15 seconds. Today I'll be shooting four different types of ammunition. First will be some cheap 55 grain Norma and after that we have Federal Gold Metal 69 grain Sierra Match King and then I have some 77 grain Sierra Match King hand loads. And last I have a box of PPU 75 grain match line that I've had laying in my ammo can for a couple years and I just need to get rid of it. All right let's get to it. All right, here's a group for the 55 grain Norma. Uh, we'll go over the numbers real quick. We had a group size of 4.370 MOA and a mean radius of 1.237 MOA. The average velocity was 2770 with a standard deviation of 23 and extreme spread of 96. Uh, overall, it looks like the group is fairly round, not uh, too many outliers. Uh, see, we have number shot number 16, shot number 12 on the left and right. The wind wasn't really blowing too much, uh, so I don't think the wind caused any of those. Uh, we'll look at the numbers of a couple of the other shots, starting with number 10. Uh, looks like the velocity was on the lower side of things. Uh, Mantis score was fine. And we'll take a look at number 18 up here. Uh, let's see. The velocity was right at the average. Uh, Mantis score looked fine. Um, and then if we look at the highs and lows, as far as the velocity, uh, shot number 20 was the lowest velocity, and that is one of these two shots up here. And then the highest velocity is uh, shot number 16, which is a shot down here. And we'll look at the, the lowest shot, according to the Mantis, was shot number 26 which is right here. It's fairly close to the middle, so I don't think that was uh, pulled too much by me. Um, 
And yeah, it uh, doesn't look like too bad of a group for a uh, you know, fairly cheap 55 grand load out of a, a fairly beat up barrel. So did uh, better than I expected. Uh, certainly I've seen better um, better groups out of uh, different barrels with this load, but yeah, for uh, for what it is, this is uh, not too bad. Uh, so next up, we are gonna move on to 69 grain federal. All right, here's a group for the 69 grain federal. We had a group size of 4.890 MOA and a mean radius of 0.896 MOA. The average velocity was 2522 with an SD of 38 and an experience spread of 170. Uh, so this is a pretty interesting looking group. We have shot number four down in the left corner here in the middle of nowhere. And then the rest of the group looks pretty uh, pretty narrow and uh, has some vertical stringing. So we're gonna look at the numbers here and uh, look at a couple of these shots and see if uh, see what's going on. So first with the average velocity at 2522, uh, I use this same uh, ammunition with my Faxon barrel, which is also 14.5. In the Faxon barrel, it had a velocity average, I think it was about 100 feet per second faster than in this Criterion barrel. So that's just kind of interesting to note. And also in the Faxon barrel, it had a, a standard deviation, I believe in like the low 20s, I think it was like 23 or something or something like that. So I wouldn't really attribute that to the ammunition. I think it appears to be more associated with the uh, with the barrel that I'm using here, which since it has a, a lot of wear in it. So it's just an interesting note to see that it's it's that much slower than the, the Faxon barrel, which only has, I don't know, somewhere between one to 3,000 rounds through it. And now we'll look at a couple of shots here, starting with shot number four in the bottom left corner there. And shot number four had the highest velocity of the group, and the Mantis score looks fine. That's interesting to note. And then we'll look at so many shots on the bottom here, and shots number nine and number 26. So shot number nine had the second highest velocity uh, of the group, and Mantis score looks fine at 99.4. And then shot number 26 uh, also had a velocity above average, and Mantis score was fine. So we'll look at a couple of the higher shots up here, seven, eight, and 11. So starting with number seven, uh, had a velocity that was lower than average. Uh, shot number eight was the, I think it's the lowest uh, velocity of the bunch. You know, shot number eight and then shot number 11 uh, was about at average velocity. And a little bit lower uh, Mantis score there. So that's interesting. Usually when you see vertical stringing, you associate that with a velocity variation, um, which if you're shooting at 600, 800, or 1,000 yards, that makes sense, um, where you're gonna have a larger vertical dispersion with more variation in velocity, but 100 yards, it doesn't seem to be seem to be true with uh, this group since these high shots are, uh, are on the lower end of velocity and these these low shots are on the, the higher end of the velocity. So it's an interesting note. Um, again, this, this group is just kind of a little bit weird. Again, shot number four felt like a, a good trigger pull. The shot, the side picture looked fine. The trigger pull felt fine. The, uh, the numbers look not out, out of the ordinary. The velocity was a little bit higher. So uh, not sure what happened there, but uh, yeah, anyway. Interesting group. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And next up, we are going to go to a 77 grain hand load. We'll see how that goes. All right, here's a group for the 77 grain uh, hand loads, which was 77 grain serum match kings on top of air account powder. Uh, looks like a pretty decent uh, pretty decent group. Uh, we had a group size of 2.265 MOA and a mean radius of 0 0.623 MOA, a average velocity of 23.99 with an ST of 17 and an extreme spread of 88. So the group looks fairly round. Uh, we'll take a look at a couple of the uh, shots on the outskirts here, shot number one, 12, and 30, and see the numbers and see what we can see. So shot number one had a velocity, let's see here, the second lowest velocity of the bunch, and Mantis score was fine. And then shot number 12 uh, had a velocity near the average. Uh, Mantis score looked looked fine. And then shot number 30 had a velocity lower than average, and the Mantis score was a uh, 99.6. So let's look at the velocity the highs and lows. So the lowest velocity was shot number 11, which is this shot over here. And then the highest velocity was shot number three, which is there. So highest velocity here, and then lowest velocity was right here. And then let's look at the, the worst shot according to the Mantis was shot number 13, which is down here. So overall, not too uh, not too bad of a group for a barrel with 15,000 rounds to it, at least in my opinion, uh, and not looking too bad. And next up, we'll look at the 75 grain PPU. All right, so here's the 75 grain PPU. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a barrel or the ammo, but these two did not make friends. This is a, a pretty 
Pretty bad looking group. We had a group size of 5.476 MOA with a mean radius of 1.390 MOA. Velocity didn't look too bad. Velocity average was 23.62 with an SD of 20 and extreme spread of 82. And we only had 19 shots here. This was uh, just kind of some extra MOA I'd laying around that I didn't mind getting rid of. But uh, anyway, let's look at uh, a few of the shots here. We'll look at a couple of the outliers. Like 2, 13, and 9. So shot number 2 was the highest velocity of the bunch and ended up lowest on the on the target here. Uh, Amanda score looked fine at uh, 97. The average Amanda score of this group was a 99.6. Uh, shot number 13 that was the lowest velocity of the bunch with a Amanda score 99.4. And then shot number 9 at a velocity a little bit above average, uh, Amanda score looked fine. And then let's look at the high shot on the target here was shot number 14, which had a velocity on the lower end. Amanda score was 99.9 on that one. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at the, the worst Mantis score of this group was shot number 15 was the lowest on Mantis, and that was pretty close to the, the middle of the group there in this little cluster. And I think we already... Saw the highs and lows. Yeah, the lowest shot, or lowest velocity shot was shot number 13. And then the highest velocity shot was shot number 2, which is shot number 2, which is, oh yeah, the one on the bottom left here. So, uh, yeah, pretty ugly group. Um, again, not sure if it was the, the ammo or the barrel, but these two did not get along. All right, well, next up we have the overall results. All right, so here are the overall results for the Criterion Barrel. You can see there's a pretty big difference between the best group and the worst group. The 77 grain hand loads weren't too bad, and then the 75 grain uh, PPU was uh, was not, not exactly a good group. And if you look at the 69 grain group versus the 55s, that's a good illustration of the difference between the mean radius versus group size. The 55s had a smaller group size, but a larger mean radius, and the 69s had a smaller mean radius and a larger group size. And you can see the difference in, the, in how the groups look there. The barrel seems to be a lot more sensitive to ammunition type and also the condition of the barrel. I grouped this barrel before with some 69 grain hand loads and 55 grain hand loads and the results were quite different from these groups. The 69 grain hand load used to be my match load and as you can see it didn't perform too well. So the barrel seems to be much more sensitive to the type of ammunition and also the amount of copper that's in the uh, in the cracks and crevices of the barrel. So if it's too clean or too fouled it seems to throw off the accuracy. But overall I think this barrel did pretty good. And next let's check out the leaderboard. All right so here is the leaderboard. Obviously this isn't a fair comparison for the Criterion barrel after having 15,000 rounds through it and also there's different weather conditions different ammo different shooting conditions and I may have shot differently on different days but I still think this is fun to look at and to my surprise the Criterion ended up second at some point in the future I hope to get a new Criterion barrel and see how that would do as I'm sure it would do much better than this one but anyway here's some bonus borescope footage from the Criterion and if you could like the video I would greatly appreciate it and in the comments below you can let me know how you thought the Criterion barrel did if you thought it would do better or worse and also anything you'd like to see me do different with my shooting or if there is a different barrel you would like to see me shoot in the future and that'll do it i'll see you next time later